Well, hello again. We are back to uh, our radio cabinet after a couple other videos that I thought were fairly good. Anyway, uh, what we're gonna, I've been doing a little bit of light stripping on the legs. There was still a little bit of finish left on them. I wanted to make sure I got as much of it off as possible. So I just have a wet rag right now and I'm going to you know, wipe it all down, go back and forth to the kitchen, wet the rag, come back out. This is what it's all about. Just a matter of Keeping it wet, keeping it off. Anyway, uh, one more thing. Uh, let me show you what I'm going to do about this right here. Instead of uh, cutting a wedge block, like, like this down here, you know, a three-corner block, I decided to go ahead and just use a flat one and glue that in place like that. That'll give it a lot more strength to hold this shelf and this. Probably doesn't make any difference, but I had a couple of small pieces of wood out there, and I figured why not make use of them. All right, I think the legs look pretty good. We'll wait till they dry now. Uh, meanwhile, I put some stripper on the area where we're going to be gluing that block. You know, whenever you glue anything, it doesn't matter if it's JB Weld or it's uh, plastic cement or whatever. You want to have a clean surface to glue on and preferably slightly rough for the glue to grab onto. You know, when I started stripping this radio, I ran into tons and tons of wax on the surface. Now, most people would be annoyed by that, but I'm really not because the wax helped preserve the wood to the extent that it's been preserved. And it was, you can bet, you can bet, this, this was in a household where the lady of the house back in the 30s or the late 40s or, or middle 30s, uh, maybe early 40s, probably the very first part of 1930s since it's a 1931 radio. You can bet that the lady of the house was very proud of this radio. She waxed it and waxed it and waxed it. Up until the day they probably, uh, you know, passed away. And then the radio was placed in that, that old shed behind that house where it was eventually rescued. So, you know, to the lady, we, to the unknown lady that took care of this cabinet, we give her kudos. Now, as soon as everything dries out and I get the wood block glued in and it, you know, dries enough to stay there on its own, we're going to go ahead and open up this pre-stain uh, wood conditioner. It's a pre-stain treatment. And we're going to cover the entire inside of this thing with the pre-stain treatment. It's very thin. You don't have to worry about painting in one direction or the other. It just goes on and it soaks in. Now, normally what this does is prevent blotching. Uh, you put it on before you stain. And then uh, within two hours, uh, you have to stain your wood. And that prevents blotching. You know, it makes it, it's a sealer. It seals the, but. You know, you can also use it plain without stain, which is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use it as the in, in, uh, interior cabinet sealer. Now, all this stuff here just looks like dirt, but it's not. It's just the color of the wood where the speaker was uh, placed. And we're going we're gonna to put this stuff everywhere. You know, it's a matter of basically just slopping it on. You know, it'll soak right in. It's, it's amazing how it disappears because it's very, very thin. It's, almost, it's thinner than water. You'll see. We are ready to glue this block in, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get that baby clamped in there with lots of glue. I want, I want a good support here. But, you know, in the process of getting ready, I, I've already mentioned uh, in a previous video that you have to double, triple, quadruple check your cabinet for every little piece of veneer, every little place where it's glued before you start your staining and everything. If you don't, you're going to miss a spot. And even then, you're probably going to miss a spot that's not glued together. Now, look right here, see? I just laid that thing in there and clamped it all and glued it all. So yeah, it's coming, it, it's separated there. What happened was this wood was bowed in. So no problem, you know, I'm just gonna lay a little glue, you know, a little glue down in there just like you do everything else. I'm just gonna clamp the whole thing together along with this block all at the same time. All right, we're just gonna lay that stuff down in there. That's pretty good size separation, believe it or not. It doesn't show it in the camera. But it's, it's pretty good size separation. Not so, not so much deep as it is wide. Doesn't quite look like it, but it is. Get that baby, look, see how far down it even goes? Yeah, over here is pretty much glued, but down over in here it's separated. And that's what makes it, you know, go back and forth. We'll wipe it down here in a minute, get all the excess glue up, and then uh, get ready to clamp her together. Well, there we go. She's all clamped up, and all I have to do now is wait for it to dry. By the way, this new, uh, I really like this new Elmer's wood glue. It dries so much faster than it used to years ago. 
Anyway, uh, while I was sitting here, I just thought I'd go back and double check all this veneer that I had glued up and everything. And sure enough, I missed a spot right here that wasn't glued. You know, you just that's just the way it is, you know. You think you get it, and you don't. It's very loose. See there? I'm going to have to put some glue behind there and clamp that up too. You know, it takes a lot of patience, lots and lots of patience to work on these cabinets. I found that out right in the beginning. Brandon, you know, my electronics mentor up there in the Detroit area, he doesn't like working on cabinets. He said it's just not his cup of tea. You know, in, in the uh, antique radio repair biz, we call that a, uh, a cabinet wimp. Oh, I'm glad I started looking really close in here. I even found another spot that needed to be glued and clamped. All right, let's get back to something different. Uh, in the last video, I told you that uh, I was going to try to find every... This, this thing here was just too rusty to use. And it is. It's shot. It's just no good at all. The other side is just no good. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, I went down to Lowe's and I, and I went into their sheet metal department. They have, a, you know, racks of sheet metal there. Some pretty good sizes. I'll be going back to them when it comes time to buy metal for the uh, floor of our Thunderbird that we're also working on. I'm going to have to get some of that put in there. Anyway, I, I got looking at the price of this thing, you know, for like, it was like $25 or something like that for a 2x2 uh, a two two sheet of metal. <laughs> I said, wait, wait a minute, I'm not spending 25 bucks <clears throat> to replace this tiny little piece of metal. Real thin stuff, it's almost aluminum foil, really. I wasn't going to spend $25 for that. Now, I, you know, if, but if I bought the existing 2x2 two two piece for use on the Thunderbird and cut, you know, this chunk out of it, I wouldn't have much, I wouldn't have much of a piece of metal left to be repaired in the Thunderbird floor. So I'll, I'll wait and when the time comes, to, I'll spend the money to get that 18 gauge metal for the floor. But this here, there had to be a cheaper way to do this, you know. <laughs> I didn't have any metal to go to. I didn't know anybody that had any. But anyway... I put the old brain in gear and I did come up with something else. We have cookie sheets. Yes, we do. And the cookie sheets are three different sizes. And I think this one right here, the small one, if the small one doesn't do it, then the medium size will. All I got to do is mark it out, cut it out, and what's left I can use for other things. But there's sheet metal right there. And it's pretty strong stuff. It's just as strong as the stuff I'm replacing. Five bucks at Walmart. Now once we get it all cut out and get it to the right size and everything, I'm going to go ahead and paint it with this barbecue and stove paint, which will help keep the heat down because I think that's what the metal was for. Was, uh, and now uh, Ron C., our good Ron C., uh, he, he, uh, he said maybe that metal was not just for uh, heat, uh, you know, protect the wood from heat, which I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. He thought it might have been an RF uh, shield. Well, maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> but what's the difference? Right now, it's going to be cookie sheeted. I think we can get away with using the small cookie sheet. Uh, it's, it hangs over. It's just a little bit, a little bit too short. About that much on both sides. Which is not bad, just about, you know, what, a little more than a quarter of an inch, about three-eighths of an inch on each side. And in the other direction, it's about the same, but not quite three-eighths of an inch, about a quarter of an inch. So I don't think it's going to make that much difference. And this side, by using a small one, it gives me a straight line to cut it. You know, all i got to do is run a grinder all the way down the edge, you know, all the way down around. And when I get done, uh, I might have a little sunk in spot here from the design of the cookie sheet. You can see where it's sunk in a little bit. But if so, I'll just won't worry about it. Just maybe tap it down or just let it go. Like I said, I think it's only there for a heat shield anyway. Then all I have to do is tack a cut. I have a, uh, well, I guess I, I don't want to do that. I, I guess I'll just go ahead and use uh, some small nails to nail it back into the wood with. So there's a way to save a little money. Well, that's going to be it for now. I'm not going to end the video. I'm just going to go in the house and upload whatever video segments I've made so far to the computer. I might have a little bite to eat. We still have some of that sesame chicken left over from the sesame uh, chicken video I made the other day. For those of you interested, it's mishmash number 260. And I might even watch a movie or whatever, and then I'll come back out later when it cools down. Hopefully by then the glue will be dried enough where I can take all the clamps off and, you know, get this thing upright, and uh, we can start 
putting on the sealer. All right, back at it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start doing our pre-stain treatment here. I usually buy a pack of cheapo paintbrushes for stuff like this, and I keep them out in the garage. I used to use foam a lot, but I haven't found a bag of all different kinds of foam lately in the local area. And uh, I think they have them up to a flea market up north, but I haven't been up there lately. <clears throat> but if I run into some, I'll go ahead and then pick a whole... I, next time, I'll pick up a, two bags of you know, mixed foam rubbers, uh, paintbrushes. They have them at Lowe's, but my God, they want a fortune for those things. That's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and just start slopping it around here as much as I can. And then we'll turn the entire thing back the other way and hit it from the other direction. So let's get cranked up on that. Let me go ahead and open up the can. Well, there you go. In case you've never seen it, you don't have to shake it or anything. In case you've never seen it, it's very thin, see? I'll shake it a little bit, see how thin it is? Really thin. I'll put a little bit on this thing right here. All I'm doing is sticking it in there and then just slopping it on. See how it just soaks it up almost immediately? This old wood here is really dry, so it's not gonna take a lot to cause it to go away once it hits the wood. Well, I went out in the old garage and dug around and I found uh, one more foam rubber brush I didn't know I had. I trimmed it down so it would fit in here. Those, uh, those hard bristle type brushes, they just don't hold the, just don't hold it like it should. This is why it's always best to use the foam rubber anyway. Holds a lot of the uh, sealer. Goes a long way before you have to refill it. Works real good. Then when you're done, all you gotta do is throw it away. I kind of like that. So I'll just keep working on it. Now after uh, 10 or 15 minutes, you're supposed to wipe any excess away. You know, I guess the stuff that just flat, it's its all soaked in, there's none left, you know, nothing left to soak up anymore. I don't think I want to do that. I might wipe a little bit, but I think after about 15, 20 minutes, that stuff's going to be pretty much gone. Well, yeah, one more thing. When you use this sealer, this Minwax uh, pre-stain treatment, it's not advisable to use water-based uh, stain afterwards, you know. Within two hours, you're supposed to uh, stain it. Uh, don't use water-based stain. This is not, uh, it would still be a little bit wet, I guess, and a water-based stain, it's just not gonna mix well. This is not water-based. All right, I think this stuff is set long enough. We can go ahead and take this stuff off for now. The glue is hardened up. We'll get them all off and then I can go ahead and put the sealer on the front up there too. All right, time to flip it around the other way. Now look, uh, I'm not going to be removing any of the excess on this. I'm just going to let it dry all night. You remove the excess after uh, 10 or 15 minutes if you're getting ready to stain it. You, they don't want you putting the stain on with any liquid floating around on the sealer. You know, let it set, but you have two hours to stain it, but they want you to wipe off the excess. I'm using it as a sealer only. You know, something just dawned on me. We're all done with the sealing inside the cabinet, but something just dawned on me while I was doing it. Do I even have to cut this thing out? I'll bet the radio chassis would fit right down inside of it, and then all they'd have to do is set the whole thing up there like that. I'll bet it would work without even being cut. We're going to give that a try before we do any grinding and cutting and shaping. It'd be a whole lot easier, don't you think? It would look kind of cool. Well, that idea went only so far. This is the chassis we're going to be putting back in. It's already been restored. Ooh, I better not lose that. Anyway, uh, let's try the next bigger pan. Well, guess what? The medium-sized pan works perfectly. Fits right down in there. And I'm pretty sure these things will stick out far enough to where they'll go through the wood. And I can put, you know, nice wooden knobs on. I haven't bought any wooden knobs yet for it. It came without the knobs. So I'm going to have to search around for something that looks really cool and they match. Maybe a larger one. Maybe a larger one for the tuner. And uh, a smaller ones for here that kind of match. So I think what I'm going to do tomorrow... So I'm just going to let this, this uh, cabinet sit all night, and then tomorrow we'll stick the whole thing down in there and uh, slide it in and see what happens. be kind of nice if everything fit great, but that, isn't that cool? I don't have to cut anything. Why cut anything if I don't have to? I don't have to worry about cutting my hands on anything, people cutting their hands when they reach in there. 
Besides, someday somebody's going to say, look, look what they did. Look at look at some jerk way back when put a cake pan, a bacon pan underneath this radio. <laughs> I have a request of our good subscriber, Ron C. See this letter C here? <laughs> Fits you perfect, my boy. This thing here uh, goes on there like this, I believe it is. I'll have to check. The, I think it goes like that fits in there or goes the other way I can't remember which but I'll, t I'll check back the original picture it doesn't really matter how it goes but I think it goes like that well this one here was missing or <laughs> I imagine it'd be the same no they're a little bit different I don't know well one way or the other you have a 3d printer my friend if I send that to you in a nice wrapped box you think you could make me one and I guess the biggest question is, even if you could, would it be stainable? I don't know what kind of material uh, those 3D printers use. I'd never seen one. I'd appreciate it. Just get back with me and let me know. Well, it's the next day. And uh, what I want to do today is get the radio in the tray in there and get the uh, holes marked in the tray to where we have to drill. This is if the whole thing you know, goes as planned, that is. We have to drill a hole where the screw comes up through into the chassis here and here. So I'll have to put those holes in the tray. And uh, But before we can do any of that, I've got a few glue areas here that came loose. You know, it's hard to spot until you finally get down here and start putting stuff on and everything. I'm going to have to do the gluing. Once I get the gluing done, I'll come back and we'll have the tray inserted in. And we'll take a look at uh, how well the... The radio shaft stick through. We got to make sure it goes through all the way. I don't think there's going to be a bit of trouble. All right. Hopefully, the last of the veneer Mohegans has been taken care of on the inside of the cabinet. I inspected it again, top to bottom. I fortunately I don't see anything, but you know, next time I do, I will. But let's press on. Let's get this set up in the uh, cabinet. Now I've measured both sides you got an equal distance from both sides and uh, marked it with a pencil on both sides so as long as I can keep it within reason of that pencil mark we should be okay let's go ahead and slip it in and see what it looks like by the way I'm missing an 82 rectifier I need to go back to my uh, restoration of this chassis and find out why maybe I borrowed it for another radio maybe it's not needed I don't know we'll see well now that does look pretty cool doesn't it yes it does and I was going to just cut out a flat piece of metal. Not needed when it's already made. Matter of fact, it even kind of matches a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, I think that's aluminum. I'm going to have to find out. But I think, I think it's aluminum, so we don't have to worry about rust. Let's go around and look at the other side. Well, that looks good, too. We got them all pretty well centered as much as she's going to go. Let me see. I'll move it around just a little bit. I do have a little bit of leeway for moving it around. The only thing I was concerned about was uh, this needle now may have to be bent down to clear the back of this uh, scutcheon. Let me find out here. The whole thing may have to go back a little or I may have to take the needle and kind of bend it down a little bit where it doesn't hit. I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, it's hitting. Just what I figured. It's barely hitting. Won't take much to adjust it. I can bend the needle down just enough to where it clears. And I was also concerned that there wouldn't be enough plastic here. And there is. It's plenty. Because underneath that plastic is, a, is an indicator, a tuning indicator. I'd like to change that plastic. Actually, that, the original one is kind of, it's got some cracks all over it. So I'm going to try to come up with something on that before we finish the radio. All right. How about that? I think we found a solution for our piece of metal. Now I need to go underneath and mark the holes where the chad, the screws go up into the bottom of the chassis. All right, you know, the best part about this is once I mark my holes up underneath here where the, you know, where the screws go up into the chassis, those screws will not only hold the chassis down, but they'll hold the pan in place too. I don't even have to drive any nails in. Very cool, okay? All right, I have decided for the next video uh, to try. I'm going to give it a try. I'm just going to kind of, you know, sort of fit them in without gluing. I try to do something about the edge of this veneer here. Put some kind of a patch in there, at least in the large part. I'm just going to go for it, give it to gusto. And uh, over the years, I've collected a lot of veneer, different kinds of veneer, thicknesses, shades. 
and uh, I'll be picking through that to see if I can't come up with little slivers that I can make and just kind of push them in and push them in along the edge here trying to get some kind of a reasonable not too noticeable <laughs> you know blend in of the wood I don't know but I think uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, selection of mostly number five of all the radios that I sent the pictures of I agree I think number five is cool but I think on this what we're going to have to do we're not going to have much of a choice I'm going to have to go with dark here like that all the way around and then the rest of the cabinet will be stained the same color and some of this wood along the edges of course is going to take the stain a little darker but I think we need to have a uh, I think we need to have a dark a dark center around here it might even wind up being dark here I don't know got to put the dark on first then we put the light on second and it won't affect the dark because uh, but if I put the light on then try to you know stain it with the dark then the dark bleeds over into the light there goes everything all the pieces so the dark has to go on first now I don't know if I'm going to uh, seal it let it dry and then use toner which is probably the best bet just use toner to darken it up which is a uh, you know, a lacquer toner and then just do the rest with stain I don't know we'll just sort of let the stain uh, determine the rest of the color of the cabinet and of course down at the bottom I want to have this dark too so we're going to have basically a dark frame all the way around the center so maybe just dark here then just regular stain here regular stain here regular stain there I don't want to go with too many different you know shades it'll look gaudy so we'll see until next time appreciate you being here this is John